I'm Lori Ward. I'm CEO at Washington's National Park Fund. We are the philanthropic partner managing gifts to Mount Rainier, North Cascades and Olympic. I often tell people um, I have the best job in the world. I, along with my wonderful colleagues, it's a joy to work with three, these three national parks. The superintendents um, attend our board meetings and advise us as we go. And um, we just have a very, very collaborative relationship with them and work to raise money for their top priority projects throughout the year. A lot of you who are with us today are very active supporters and for that we're incredibly grateful. Um, this, this afternoon, we're going to hear quite a bit from Chip about the status of uh, what's going on up at Mount Rainier. Um, just before we do, I want to share with you that we have a board of 22 very active and involved board members. Um, our mission, our vision is parks, and we believe that our parks are parks that are strong and vibrant, youthful and everlasting. And we work towards that as our vision as we continue moving forward. Um, challenging times right now, and yet our parks will be there for us soon and somewhat there now. You'll hear more about the details as Chip gets started. So uh, with that, I am going to introduce Chip Jenkins, Superintendent at Mount Rainier National Park. It's really great to have you with us here again, Chip, today. So thank you for joining us. Thanks. Glad to, hear, glad to be here. And thanks to everybody who's uh, tuning in. Yeah. So what's happening up at Mount Rainier? Dive in. Tell us a little bit. Yeah, well, you know, uh, you know, like like much of the world, right? Where um, I'll just be straight up with you. I think that we, I think many people are kind of feeling um, uh, the stress of the current situation, where we've got uh, we're we're twelve weeks into this uh, the response to the COVID nineteen pandemic. Um, you know, we also have a you know tremendous amount of. Uh, um, anxiety, uh, you know, around the um, economic uh, crisis that's uh, facing our country. And then, you know, the events over the last 10 days, 10, 11 days in terms of um, uh, uh, the response triggered by uh, Mr. Floyd's death and um, the uh, social demonstrations that are going on. It's, um, you know, it's a, it, it's a, it's a challenging time for us. And we recognize though that the National parks and public lands are a place where many people want to find solace and they want to find inspiration and they want to find a respite and they um, people are looking forward to be um, to getting back out uh, uh, and and to have the values of the Mount Rainier and the national parks and the um, other public lands have. I, I will also say that the National Park Service, you know, is at the American people through their elected officials in Congress, the National Park Service also does play a role in terms of preserving and telling the story of the advancement of um, civil rights in our country. And I encourage people to go to nps.gov, the website, the National Park Service website, and learn about the journey from civil war to civil rights and um, uh, many different places like Martin Luther King and the Selma to Montgomery Trail and the uh, Tuskegee Airmen and women's rights and a variety of other places that the American people have set aside as we continue to struggle uh, with uh, ensuring that everybody in our country is treated with um, justice and equality. So, Thank you, Chip. Thank you very much. Um, tell us a little bit. Let's start off with what's open, where people can gain access to Mount Rainier National Park. Share a little bit if you would. Yeah, sure. So um, uh, so through all of this, uh, we, we have kind of this um, uh, I interesting dynamic around Mount Rainier where we have um, uh, roads and facilities um, normally are closed um, in the winter and the spring, uh, so many of them as a result of, you know, 10, 15, 20 feet of snow. And so we have kind of the twin things of going on in terms of um, restoring access both from our uh, uh, COVID-19 response as well as also doing spring opening. So right now actually uh, people can access the perimeter of Mount Rainier National Park. You can um, you can drive through on Highway 410 and 123 on the east side between Enumclaw and Packwood and all of the trailheads along that road corridor are open. Um, you can walk into Ohana. We actually have the restrooms in the campground and at the visitor center are open to provide that for folks. And you can drive up the uh, uh, from to the Carbon River Road uh, uh, to um, just shy of the boundary um, and be able to park, uh, or you can drive up to the gate at Malwich um, and be able to and be able to park. 
Um, uh, yeah, and the backcountry is open. So actually people can come into the backcountry. You can get a uh, permit for an uh, overnight uh, wilderness trip in the park uh, to, to be able to do dispersed recreation. Thank you. Any, uh, you know the million dollar question here, when will um, the gates of at Nisqually open down in Ashford, outside of Ashford? Um, sure, so the road like between, that? yep, so the road between um, what we call the Nisqually gate, the, um, uh, that goes up through Long, Longmire into Paradise, so that road has been closed, it is still closed, <clears throat> and we are, um, we are uh, moving in concert uh, with the state of Washington uh, in order to be able to support the public health response to COVID-19. And so the governor of Washington has decided to um, actually uh, have a more refined approach, which is going on a county by county basis. And the majority of Mount Rainier National Park, including that road corridor, is actually in Pierce County. So we are aligned with what Pierce County is doing. Uh, yesterday, uh, Pierce County submitted a request to the state of Washington to be able to move from their fate, Washington State Phase 1 to Phase 2. Um, when Pierce County moves to Phase 2, um, uh, we will shortly uh, after, we will move to restore the private vehicle access to Longmire and Paradise. So we're, we're um, I think the, from what I understand is Washington Department of Health is uh, reviewing that application from Pierce County. Uh, and um, hopefully by the end of the week, the state will be able to make a decision on that. And then um, 12 to 24 hours later, um, it, it will take us to kind of um, do the final steps in terms of spooling up to make sure that we've got staff on uh, to, to be able to uh, open things up. How about the visitor centers? Uh, the visitor center, yeah, so a visit is going to be really different this year. Uh, currently, um, our plans are in our initial phase, we, we actually have a three-phased plan for reopening. We're currently in phase one and then we would move to phase two. Under phase two, uh, the visitor centers are going to remain closed. Um, uh, that includes the, the um, Jackson Visitor Center at Paradise. Uh, when we get when we get through normal spring opening for sunrise, the sunrise visitor center will also remain closed uh, until we move to um, phase three. Essentially, um, when uh, facilities are open that can allow um, larger groups to be able to congregate in closer yeah. proximity. So, but what we are going to do is that we're prepared to be able to to meet people's needs for answering questions and to be able to get information. Um, we're, uh, we're updating the information that we have uh, digitally so people can be able to get to our website. Um, actually, I think we have a slide where uh, we might be able to put that up to be able to show people our um, website address. Uh, there is also um, encourage people to sign, uh, follow Mount Rainier on the Twitter account because we'll push out information about when information changes and then you can go over to the website. We're also going to be, uh, thanks to the generosity of uh, donors from uh, to Washington's National Park Fund. We're experimenting with having some very large format orientation and wayfinding signs uh, that we will temporarily uh, install outside up at Paradise to be able to help people get the current um, trail information. And then we'll also have rangers on duty um, using COVID mitigation, uh, including social distancing and plexiglass barriers to be able to be there and to be able to answer people's questions. And we're anticipating doing the same things uh, over in Ohana and eventually when sunrise opens. Great, thank you. Uh, Chip, there's a lot of volunteers up at Mount Rainier, sometimes up to uh, 2,000 people giving yep. of their time and their talents and maintenance of the trails and a lot of different things. Uh, what role are they gonna be able to play this summer? A lot of them are with us here today. Yeah, uh, volunteers, we are, Mount Rainier National Park is very, very lucky to have um, uh, a, a collection of um, uh, people who bring a wide breadth of um, knowledge, experience, skills, energy, talent, um, whether they are people who come and work for half a day or people who come and um, commit much, much of the summer. Uh, they provide um, uh, a variety of critical things, not the least of which is serving as ambassadors in the local community for being able to share accurate information about what's going on and then being actively involved in the park. Um, unfortunately, as a result of the um, COVID-19 and some of the mitigation measures that we're taking, 
we are scaling back um, our, some of our operations this summer. You know, but for example, we've actually hired half as many summer employees as we normally do, um, just simply because um, in, in an unusual way, it's a, labor is not our problem, space is our problem, right? We need to be able to maintain adequate space among folks. But having said that, there are some really, there are some important ways that volunteers um, uh, contribute that will be operating this summer. The Meadow Rovers program, the Ravens program, programs where we have volunteers directly engaged in helping to serve visitors uh, to be able to provide preventative search and rescue information uh, to help keep people, keep people out of trouble, initial emergency response, um, roadside assistance, as well as also to be taking steps in order to be able to help uh, uh, people behave appropriately in terms of protecting the meadows and the high alpine environment. So those are some of the ways. We will also be seeing about some other um, uh, volunteer activities in terms of direct meadow restoration as well as also trail work, but it's probably going to be on a um, lower schedule or scale than it has been in past years. That makes sense, Chip. You you mentioned employees. You know, how is everybody doing? A lot of people who are with us care deeply about the rangers and the scientists and all park staff. You know, how are they doing? Yeah, our um, so I, I'll say that our employees um, were again we're really really lucky because we have such a collection of um, talent and energy uh, of of people that come and work with us, and so. Um, uh, the, uh, I was in the, uh, up around in Longmire and over in Ahana the last couple of days, and I would actually say people are itching to go. So we've, um, we've onboarded, um, uh, we normally start to onboard our summer employees back in March, and we actually delayed bringing almost all of our employees on until May 24th. Um, and so uh, over the weekend of May 24th, we brought on about 120 employees. Um, uh, many of them moved into government, government provided housing that they rent. Uh, and then uh, over the last week and this week, people are going through orientation and training. We've had to completely retool our orientation and training, taking into account COVID-19. Um, you know, people are using Teams and um, distancing. We've actually, or Microsoft Teams is what I mean. It's kind of like Zoom, you know, in order to be able to do stuff uh, through video. Um, we've... Uh, uh, um, uh, broken into much smaller groups of groups of five who are doing individual um, individual uh, uh, training, and I think they're you know folks are um, they're itching to go in terms of having the gate open and in order to be able to welcome uh, welcome people at the park and serve them. Mm -hmm. I will also say there's um, there's a lot of conversation going on right now about people being. Um, about uh, folks who happen to be who are in uniform and working with the public and how um, uh, I think some of our employees are they, they are they are talking with themselves and they are asking me questions about um, as we are welcoming and working with the public uh, and we are um, striving to make sure that every person understands that they are welcome to visit and enjoy their national park there are times where we need to go up and have conversations with people about what appropriate behavior in the park looks like. And in order to be able to help educate and inform uh, people to do that. And with the dynamic that has been going on over the last uh, 10 days, um, there, 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 is some, uh, there are conversations going on about how members of the public are going to be viewed working with us in uniform. It makes sense, Chip. Yeah. You know, it certainly makes sense. So, yeah, I appreciate all that. Before we move into talking about backcountry permits and um, campgrounds, whether they'll be open, tell us a little bit about climbing. You know, um, I believe that up until 10,500 feet, it's, it's open. Yep. But yeah, share a little bit yeah. about so, this. Um, so we did have to close, uh, we did have to close the mountain above 10,500 feet, which that's actually the elevation of Camp Muir and up. And the reason that we did that was uh, directly as a response of COVID-19, twofold. One is while, um, you know, while, the, the, you know, the image of the backdrop behind you shows Mount Rainier as being a, you know, a vast icy landscape. Um, anybody who has been on the mountain and has climbed knows that 
um, predominantly people concentrate in um, on two routes, and then within that route, within on those routes, they concentrate in um, several areas. And you know, in the initial phases of COVID nineteen, to response to respond to the um, social distancing, it was not going to be possible for us in terms of being able to maintain that social distancing both for public, but also as importantly um, for our employees. Um, you know, and it's a key thing for us that with the relatively large number of people that can be up on the mountain, particularly at Camp Muir um, and above, uh, you know, it's not unusual on a beautiful sunny day that we could have 300 people in a very limited space at Camp Muir. And um, we need to be able to provide restrooms so that we're dealing with the human waste. And we uh, pretty routinely have emergency medical services or search and rescue activity. Um, and uh, when you have to do that emergency services in a high alpine environment, it means that the team of people have to come together in close proximity. And so, um, so we have had mountaineering closed. We are working on standing back up the mountaineer, mountaineering operation. Um, the way that we're going to be doing this is that it's, it's going to be a phased reopening of Mount Rainier. First, we start at the entrance gates, you know, open, open the gates up, allow people to drive into the park, welcome them, and then we'll gradually, and then we will be moving in a phased way up the mountain. So we anticipate we'll be standing up the mountaineering program. I don't have a schedule um, yet. We're working out the details of that, but it's coming. Thank you, Chip. What about backcountry permits? Uh, how are people accessing them? Uh, share a little bit about that, please. Yep, sure thing. So in this time of COVID-19, you know, one of the things that we need to do is make, make sure that we're maintaining our social distancing, both between members of the public as well as also our, our, um, our staff. So um, you can go and get a backcountry permit now um, if you go to the website. And again, you can put that slide up. If you go to the website and on the website, you'll, um, you'll see there's a plan your visit. And underneath plan your visit, there's basic information. And then underneath basic information is permits and reservations. And um, the information about how to be able to get a backcountry permit is right there um, uh, on the website. Uh, I a change this year is, is with the COVID-19 um, responses that we are moving to an entirely online system. So uh, people will not be able to get walk-up permits, but they will be able to get permits um, uh, 48 hours in advance of their, uh, of, of their trip. Uh, through the online system. And we will be making um, uh, announcements uh, with more details about that in the coming days. Great, thank you. Let's talk campgrounds. Sure, hey, and let me, uh, let me also just ask, so we know, um, we know that a key um, benefit, right? A key, a key way that Mount Rainier serves the needs of people, right? I mean, the, a key way that Mount Rainier, um, uh, a key thing that we do is um, feed the spirit, feed the soul, speed the heart, um, particularly for people being able to, you know, climb, to mountaineer, to ski, to, to have a backcountry trip, right? And, um, and this is a really different year. And we are, we are having to make transitions in terms of how we um, ensure that we provide that access and provide those abilities to be able to feed people's spirit that way, um, keep keep my people keep my, you know keep our park rangers safe, uh, and to be able to do that in a way where we disperse recreation and we um, you know provide wilderness experience. And so you know so as we move through these changes in terms of restoring mountaineering access, as we work to you know stand up the permitting system. We just, one of the key ways that people can help us is have patience, right? This is all new for all of us. So we, we are doing our best. Um, my, my employees that, you know, your park rangers who are there who are trying to serve your needs, they're, um, you know, they, they are trying to do their best in terms of um, helping you get out and have a great, uh, great experience. I just ask that everybody have a, a little bit of patience. And so turning attention to patients is campgrounds, right? So um, when we first open, when we first restore access, uh, it's primarily gonna be for front country day use and back country overnight use. So you'll see in the coming week or so, 
um, while people will be able to come into the park and we welcome them back, you'll be able to have a backcountry trip, but there's not going to be any front country overnight opportunities yet. The campgrounds and the lodging will not yet be, be open. Um, we need to uh, we need to go through this phase, the first uh, the first step of our phased reopening with the day use. Um, see how that works. See how people are behaving. Are people recreating responsibly? And then we can take additional steps in order to bring overnight accommodations online. And this is completely consistent with what's going on around the state of Washington. I was on a phone call, coordinating phone call this morning and uh, with uh, uh, state parks. And I understand that state parks is in the process of standing up campgrounds in 22 counties that have moved to phase two. However, it's likely to take them several weeks to bring all of their, all of their campgrounds online. And in fact, there's actually um, three or four counties that are in phase two that have actually asked the state to not open up their campgrounds. So we're all just trying to move cautiously here to both have the benefits of public land, the benefits of uh, overnight camping, um, but also make sure that we're keeping people safe. Uh, there's been a, a big uptick in sales of bikes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, um, and bike service and repairs. And if people wanted to drive to close to one of the entrances and ride their bikes and can they do that? So um, people will be able to, um, once we open the road in Nisqually at the, you know, to Longmire, people will be able to ride their bike up the West Side Road um, as they normally do. And then um, uh, as we do every year, um, you know, there'll be the opportunity to be able to ride over on the Sunrise Road um, or in the White River. And um, uh, we are we're on a normal schedule. Um, that will not open um, in advance. Uh, but we're we're on a we're on a normal schedule. We still actually have, um, you know, sunrise is still under snow. Um, we actually have, uh, uh, you know, while we've gained uh, administrative access up there, I think it's uh, starting next week. We're actually going to be sending people up there with uh, shovels and uh, hand-powered snowblowers in order to start digging out the building so that we can, um, you know, so that we can start to turn the power on and get the water system working and start to charge the, the uh, wastewater system. Chip, um, people that have reservations at Cougar Rock, uh, if, if the day comes and goes and it doesn't open, I imagine they'll be able to get refunds through yeah. recreation, recreation.gov. Can you just yep. address that a little bit? Yep, people will be able to get, re for, for reservations that are canceled, canceled, people will be able to get, uh, uh, get their, uh, um, get refunded. Yep. And we're hoping, you know, we're, uh, I know that Cougar Rock, in a normal year, Cougar Rock would be open by now. Um, at, you know, we, we, we are anticipating that the campgrounds will open. It's just going to take us a couple of weeks um, in order to be able to do that. And let me say that part, part of the, part of the reason is, um, as I said, for safety, but part of the reason I touched on it earlier in the call, which is, um, we have hired um, just about half of our normal staff for the summer. So we have fewer people on board. So that is, um, that translates into it's taking us longer to, um, you know, to turn the power on, to turn the water systems on, to get them uh, sanitized, to get buildings dewinterized, you know, and to, and to be prepared for opening. You mentioned um, Paradise Inn and the lodges in the in the park. I, I, you know, I'm pretty sure you you have no clue when activity may start up there. Is that right? Well, yeah, I think. Um, well, we have a we're working with Rainier Guest Services very closely, and I think what people will see is first they will see um, the store at the National Park Inn in Longmire will open. That'll be available with grab and go food, and um, as well as gifts. Uh, then uh, probably see uh, lodging at the National Park Inn open up um, with the uh, restaurant um, uh, serving uh, under the conditions that apply to uh, restaurants in Pierce County. Uh, then we are likely to see uh, Paradise Inn, um, uh, uh, the store at Paradise Inn open for grab and go food. Uh, and, um, and then I think it's, it's uh, there is a complex business decision that is going to have to be made in terms of um, lodging being provided up there. Because um, one of the key factors uh, that many people may not be thinking about, but that with the COVID-19 response, we 
uh, both the National Park Service and the concessionaires, we have to completely change the way that we house our employees. Um, we cannot house them in high density housing uh, like we have done in previous years. Uh, for us with the National Park Service, what that means is that we have, we're in a place where we are putting uh, employees in housing where they, um, it's one person per bedroom per bathroom. Uh, it, uh, the concessionaire um, has a, a number of things that are more dormitory style. And so they are having to um, really adjust their operating model uh, in terms of how they go about doing that. And, and part of that, you know, operations is, um, will they have enough staff in order to be able to provide kind of the key, you know, key services. And so they're working through all of that. We have some questions I'm going to pull up, but before sure. I do, we, we're doing well on time. Anyone who's participating today, if you do have questions, go ahead and insert them in the Q&A box down at the bottom. I want to toss out kind of a fun question to you, Chip, that came in um, earlier this week. One of our guests today is planning on proposing. I, I don't think his girlfriend's on today. I, you know, it's a surprise. It's too late. Yeah, right. Um, this summer up, up at Mount Rainier National Park, and he's wondering, from your perspective, you know, you know the park well. Which spot would have the nicest backdrop? Oh my gosh! You know what? You know what? I think would actually be great. That's actually one of those things that I would, if I was that person, I'd actually throw that out on like our Twitter feed or something and see what people come back. Because I actually, I, I know for a fact that there are many people probably on this, on this video call as well as elsewhere who know the park, um, who have, would have fabulous ideas in terms of how to, uh, you know, be able to do that. I guess what I would, my advice to him, my advice to that person would be to kind of think through, are you looking for a, are you looking for a quiet, isolated place? Or are you looking for like a, a group dynamic where people, where, you know, you got the, you got the roar of the crowd, you know, behind you. So um, that, I would take those, uh, I would take those kind of um, uh, in, into consideration. The other, what, and what I would say is that if you are looking for trying to do something where you are, um, have some privacy, then I would urge you to try to do it at, at, at um, uh, I don't mean the location, I mean the time of day, at sunrise, early in the morning, right? If many of the places you go, whether it's Paradise or Sunrise or Ohana, or um, if you come in early in the morning, there's relatively few people around. So that's my advice for you. Thank you very much. Let's see. Um... What do you know about our other national parks, uh, North Cascades and Olympic, and where they're at in the process? You know, you and I both know some from what we're seeing and hearing from our colleagues, but can you shed yeah, any I don't, light? You know, um, what I know is it's kind of fact-based is the best thing that people can do is go to their website. And if you throw our, if you throw our website back up on, I can give you a, I can give you a little um, uh, trick in terms of trying to uh, find other parks' websites. Uh, if you put that slide back up, and so if you see where it says website, nps.gov slash, and then there are four letters, M-O-R-A. So every national park has a four letter code for it. And so for North Cascades, it's N-O-C-A. In Olympic, it's O-L-Y-M. And so, uh, and for Yosemite, it's Y-O-S-E. And for Yellowstone, it's Y-E-L-L. -L. And so um, everybody's website, you just plug in the NOCA or the uh, uh, Olim, uh, right there, and it'll take you right to their website to be able to um, get their current uh, current information. Thank you. Uh, let's see. So, some folks are asking about toilet facilities, and you know, mm -hmm. you're all preparing. That's a, a big priority for the park. Yep. Uh, as you phase and begin opening up, tell us your plans for how that. Yeah. So, um, I think one thing that is. Um, one thing anybody who's visited Mount Rainier, you intuitively know, but I'll just say it, right, is um, Mount Rainier National Park for the vast majority of visitors, the vast majority of visitors drive in and don't go very far from the road. Um, the part that all of that, inf um, a visit to Mount Rainier was actually intentionally constructed and it was intentionally constructed to um, uh, deliver people and host people at areas that are hardened. And so we have places, you know, like Longmire and Ohana and Paradise and Sunrise 
Uh, and when you concentrate people like that, we need to make sure that we are taking care of human waste. Uh, we have to take care of human waste, both for human health and safety, as well as also the safety of the natural ecosystem. So yes, at those places, Paradox, you know, up the Nisqually River corridor, as you drive in, you can stop at Couts Creek, or you can stop at Longmire, you can stop at Narada Falls, and up at Paradise, and the restrooms will be functioning. Um, we've got uh, uh, we've got custodial staff on that will be um, uh, that will be cleaning them. Um, I will say it's uh, uh, we are um, uh, what you should count on is that the restrooms will be cleaned at least once a day. Generally, they're cleaned in the morning. So, you know, you should come prepared with your own hand sanitizer uh, uh, and um, and just be aware of the cleaning schedule for that. Thanks, Chip. Uh, let's see, can you, in general, can you tell folks how Meadow Rover volunteers will be used differently this year? Do you have any thoughts on that or are you close enough to that? You know, I haven't talked to, Maureen is the uh, super capable uh, interpreter who coordinates our, uh, our uh, Meadow Rovers and I've not talked with Maureen about the specifics of what the operational details are. I know that what she has laid out though is, is that the normal orientation and training at the start of the season will be different in the sense that uh, from what I understand is, is that we might be doing it in smaller groups or might be doing it in a way that is um, helping people to maintain their social distancing. What I, what I suspect is also is that we may um, uh, schedule rotating. Um, it's part of what we're trying to do with our employees in terms of um, uh, scheduling out start times so that not everybody starts at the same time so that people congregate in the um, in the work locations as they're, you know, getting ready for the day, you know, get, you know, checking in, doing their safety assessments, gathering safety gear, radio and whatnot. We're, we're, um, uh, we're scheduling that out. So there, um, I think the best thing to do is to, you know, talk with the supervisor about that in terms of those details. Mm -hmm. um, people are wondering about the volunteer campground. Um, will it be opening in phase two or three? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, actually, when we open, um, the Longmire Stewardship Campground will open. Um, however, it's going to be operated at a smaller capacity. And, and at least for the foreseeable future, we will not be having any showers. Uh, so, and part of that is, is because of the uh, CDC guidance related to um, uh, shower facilities that are shared by multiple people. Um, essentially, it requires a thorough a disinfecting cleaning after every use. Um, and uh, that's something that is just not sustainable for us um, with, uh, uh, um, uh, with the number of people that could be staying in the campground. So um, we are giving priority to um, organized, uh, um, organized groups that are coming with their own leader. In large part, again, it goes back to COVID-19 because um, uh, we are relying upon um, we are relying upon the leadership and the supervision of those groups in order to be able to help maintain those groups' safety um, uh, as they come and do work in the park. Tour buses? Will you uh, be tour buses, uh, tour buses will be allowed, you know, in, in, in the park. Yep. Following up on the climbing, we're good on time. Following up on the climbing question, do you see any difference in um, opening times between the different routes, Emmons versus DC? Yeah, I do, um, we're actually, we're still working that out. Um, if there is a difference, people should expect that the DC would be for the disappointment Cleaver up through Camp Muir would be first. Um, so we are still working out that detail. Okay, well, there uh, well be actually, and also let me say, I didn't cover this. What we are also still working out and what people should expect is, is that we will probably, uh, we will probably be um, uh, operating this year with uh, fewer permits in order to uh, in order to uh, reduce the density and uh, ensure uh, adequate space um, between parties, particularly at places where congregation occurs. Chip, will there be parking restrictions? Uh, no, Matt, you know I know that there's uh, stories. You know, I know that um, other parks, Rocky Mountain, Yosemite, um, uh, Zion, uh, are uh, looking at implementing um, uh, day use or timed reservation systems uh, for the park this year in order to be able to 
uh, manage to existing capacity in order to be able to try to maintain social distancing. Um, while Mount Rainier, we do have significant challenges in terms of uh, traffic congestion, uh, particularly uh, at Longmire and Paradise and Sunrise on uh, during the middle of the day on Saturdays and Sundays. That is not a tool um, uh, that we have decided to try to uh, implement this year. Um, I think people would expect that as we have done for the last 10 years is that there will be on busy days at sunrise that there will be metering at the White River uh, entrance gate. So if you don't get there early, um, you may have to wait uh, at for uh, uh, parking spaces at the uh, uh, in the parking lot to be able to turn over. So um, it is it is going to be interesting. We noticed in March when we were um, open, uh, but the visitor center was closed and the Paradise Inn was closed. We noticed that uh, um, parking spaces appeared to be turning over at a faster rate. Um, uh, so with the with the uh, Jackson Visitor Center. Uh, uh, closed at least through the first part of the summer uh, and with the Paradise Inn closed for a bit, it's going to be interesting to see how visitor use patterns may or may not change. Chip, the million dollar question, I'm going to take you back to that because some folks logged in a few minutes late and they're wondering how, how, what answer do you have to when Nisqually gates will open? Sure. Could so again, we're, um, we are aligned with, uh, uh, we are aligned with what the state of Washington is doing in terms of moving from phase one to phase two, phase two allowing uh, recreation where we have um, larger number of people uh, are, are congregate and larger party size. And uh, you know what, the, what Washington state has decided to do is work on a more refined approach where they're, where they're making decisions on a county by county basis. And so most of Mount Rainier, including the Nisqually Corridor, Longmire and Paradise is in Pierce County. So we are, uh, Pierce County is currently in phase one, um, uh, which is the most restrictive. And uh, Pierce County yesterday submitted a request to the state of Washington to be able to move to phase two. Um, so we are, um, when, uh, when uh, Pierce County is allowed to be able to move into phase two, then uh, 24 hours, 36 hours uh, later, we will be um, uh, we'll be seeing about restoring access. So it takes us a little bit of time just to, at the last minute to kind of spool up the last thing in terms of making sure that we've got the custodials on board and the uh, 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 rangers, you know, the additional staff on board in terms of being able to uh, welcome people back. And would you touch base on um, Sunrise because so many of our folks are, that's where they love to go. Yeah. Um, yeah, early, uh, early July guests. Yep, so opening. the reminder for everybody is that Sunrise generally never opens until, you know, first week of July. So we're, you know, we are, uh, we're, um, so that's, uh, we're maintaining that as a, uh, as a target. Um, uh, we are a little bit behind in terms of, or we are behind normal um, uh, in terms of um, getting everything opened up there. Uh, we, we've plowed the roads up there. Uh, uh, we're we're going to be sending crews up on, next week that'll be um, hand shoveling and using smaller snow blowers in order to be able to uh, dig out the uh, power system, dig out the water system, dig out the wastewater system in order to be able to to de-winterize those and uh, be able to get them charged and um, certified in order to be able to operate. And then we'll go about starting to um, dig out and uh, de-winterize the buildings up there. A couple of common questions going on about um, with the social distancing and, and um, how will visitors gain access to trail information while they're in the park? Yeah. Um, will there, you know, Yep. So uh, first thing is, is what I would really, I, I would really encourage people to recreate responsibly. Kind of a, you know, the key thing about re recreate responsibly at the start is know before you go. So encourage people to make use of the Park Service um, website. Maybe we can put that back up again. Uh, it, so that if you, if you go to our website and underneath the website, 
Um, there, uh, there is a tab that the very first tab is called plan your visit and it's basic information and that can take you to trail uh, trail information. So um, get that information um, before you go. There are also other websites out there you can use. A, a really great one to use is the Washington Trails Association. Uh, they maintain um, a, a very robust um, trip report uh, a website that can also help people plan their trips. So, um, and then coming up, uh, you, can, uh, you can access, uh, there will be um, rangers outdoors uh, up at, at places like Paradise and Sunrise to be able to uh, answer people's questions. We're also, uh, thanks to the generosity of Washington's National Park Fund, uh, we are installing some temporary large format uh, signage uh, at, uh, at Paradise that is going to be able to uh, provide uh, trail information up there. And depending upon how well that works and what we learn from it, we might be looking at doing similar things at Sunrise. Thank you. Um, a few more questions. Up at sunrise, is this a, a pretty average year for snowfall, or has it been? Has there been more snow than usual? At yeah, we are uh, at least for uh, snowpack, which is kind of what people care about in terms of like where is it in terms of melt at. Uh, I was just looking at the report this morning, and I think we are at one hundred and seven percent of normal. So I would, I, so I would, I would, uh, I would call it normal. I think we've whipped through everything really well. Folks have had some great questions. Uh, as we begin to wrap up, do you have any closing comments you'd like to share with everyone, Chip? Yeah, uh, uh, several things. Um, first and foremost, uh, what I would like to do is, I, I mean, just what I really wanna do is that if you're taking time out of your busy day and energy to call into this, clearly you really care about Mount Rainier and maybe other national parks. And I just wanna thank you for that. Um, you know, um, th this is your park. These are your public lands. And um, we appreciate your support and your interest. Um, we, we appreciate the commitment that people have to recreating responsibly, coming out and uh, looking at uh, caring for the park as well as caring for yourself and caring each other. Um, I also just, I, kn I know it's been really, really difficult. We've been closed for the last 12 weeks um, and uh, people are looking forward to you know, getting all of those things that the, the magic of Mount Rainier um, provides to you, and um, and you and you want that back. And we appreciate the patience that you have had uh, in in coming. We're really looking forward to welcoming people. And then, um, uh, as I mentioned, it's you know it's going to be a really different year. Um, even uh, we have employees who have worked at Mount Rainier for over forty years, and. Uh, even for those folks who have worked there for, for 40 years, this is a new year. Um, we have never operated this way before. Um, we are having to stand back up operations in a way that we haven't done before. We're having to implement procedures and mitigation steps in ways that we haven't done before. And so, um, you know, if you, have, if you have a couple hundred people who are all trying to do work and it's all new to everybody, we're going to make mistakes. It's going to take a little bit of time. And so I just ask that you continue to have your patience, uh, you know, through, uh, through, um, through the summer with us. And then last, you know, with everything that is going on, uh, particularly in the last 10 days and the concern that people have about, um, you know, about um, equity and justice in our country, you know, I just encourage you to kind of uh, reach out and think about maybe you know people who have never visited Mount Rainier. Maybe you know people who have never felt welcome on public lands. You know, if you're if you're a person who's tuning tuning on here, um, you probably are pretty knowledgeable and pretty skilled. And so hopefully, maybe what you can do is invite someone to come out and understand what their public lands are about. Thanks. Yeah, I love that, Chip. It's a great lead in. In two weeks, we're going to have a um, some of our friends from Casa Latina. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll have a sp yeah, Spanish-based um, conversation for junior rangers. Uh, so we're excited about that. That's taking place in two weeks. Um, next week, for everyone's information, we'll be traveling up to um, North Cascades National Park and doing a special program on soundscapes, which I think is going to be fascinating myself. And um, we're going to continue these through the months of, uh, through the summer months, probably going every other week. Uh, let's see, one more I want to mention is on June 24, we'll have an author from, um, he's an emeritus faculty from Evergreen 
State College, yes. And uh, his name's Jeff, and he's going to share uh, about his book that he's written on nat national history of Mount Rainier. So go to www.wnpf.org backslash field trip and you'll find us. Uh, let us know what questions you have. And just again, Chip, thank you so much. And, you know, we're all with you as you all work so hard to open up a place that so many of us love deeply. So thank you. Thanks for your time today. Thank you. We look forward Take to seeing you all on the trail. There you go. Thanks, everyone. Take care.